I have often heard people say, How can we trust the Bible? It has been edited and re-edited by men, and that everyone knows the Bible was censored by the Roman Catholic Church in 325 A.D. at the Council of Nicaea. To this I would say, Are you sure about that? Have you ever looked into it for yourself? The fact is that the subject of the canon never came up at the Council of Nicaea, and we have all the council rulings, plus reports by several attendees, to absolutely prove that the council never issued any such rulings, nor even discussed such ideas as censoring or changing the Bible in any way. The canon of the New Testament was not even on the agenda of the Council of Nicaea. For the most part, this idea is the creation of Dan Brown, the author of the Da Vinci Code, and many others. It is simply not true. It seems the Council of Nicaea was convened in an attempt to settle the controversy raised by Arianism. The Council also addressed disciplinary decisions concerning the status and jurisdiction of the clergy in the early church, and for establishing the date on which Easter is celebrated. Remember, at the time of the Council of Nicaea, the Roman Catholic Church hierarchy did not yet exist, but the Roman Emperor Constantine knew that he was having trouble gaining legitimacy among Christians. He craved this and sought out Eusebius to see how to make this happen. Eusebius suggested a council of all the independent Christian churches within the Roman Empire, and Constantine agreed. There was no central authority. The bishops that were summoned derived their authority from their own independent, local, Bible-believing congregations, which was functioning quite well without the interference of Rome. In fact, many of them still bared the scars of persecution from the Roman Empire and were rightly skeptical of such a gathering. So you may ask, when was the canon decided upon? Every New Testament book was cited as authoritative by a church father within one generation. We have more than 32,000 New Testament quotations from early church writers from the 2nd and 3rd centuries. In fact, we could recreate virtually the entire New Testament just from the quotes of the early church writers of the 2nd and 3rd centuries. We can be quite certain that the New Testament we have today has come down to us just as it is from the earliest days, and we can be quite certain what they consider to be Scripture. In fact, by around 200 A.D., 125 years before the Council of Nicaea, they were quite openly quoting and referencing all the New Testament books of the Bible. Paul's letters were already considered scripture in the mid-first century. Take a look at how the Apostle Peter himself called them scripture in his letter. 2 Peter chapter 3 verses 14 through 16. And conversely, the Apostle Paul, writing between A.D. 62 and A.D. 65, quoted Luke chapter 10 verse 7 and called it scripture. Irenaeus, writing in about 170 A.D., tells us that the fourfold gospel was already a rock-solid fact by then. The fact that the fourfold gospel is also reflected in the so-called Muratorian Fragment, which was written about the same time, 170 A.D., note 155 years before Nicaea, that the Muratorian Fragment lists for us basically the whole New Testament canon, and it shows us once again that the fourfold gospel was an established fact by then. Justin Martyr also confirms the validity of the four Gospels, writing between 150 and 155 A.D. The sheer number of quotations by the early church fathers of these canonical New Testament writings clearly shows that the early church had decided long before the Council of Nicaea which books they considered to be inspired. So what about the Gnostic Gospels, such as the Gospel of Thomas? Dan Brown of the Da Vinci Code says the only reason they weren't put in the Bible is because the Catholic Church didn't like what they had to say. Is that true? The answer is no. A large number of spurious documents emerged during the centuries following the ministries of the Apostles and were universally rejected by the early Church. Copies of a group of these were found at Nag Hammadi in Egypt, dating from the 3rd and 4th centuries. And these are uncritically accepted by Dan Brown as accurate. These include the Gospel of Thomas, the Gospel of Philip, the Gospel of Mary, the Gospel of Truth, and about four dozen others. They were written under false pseudonyms, such as Thomas, and even the promoters of these documents do not claim that the disciple Thomas actually wrote it. They were all written centuries after the Gospel period, in contrast to the contemporaneous eyewitness accounts in the New Testament, and don't even claim to be actual records of events. And finally, let's look at a few points regarding the Nakamadi texts and the Gospel of Thomas, which appears to be the most likely of the Gnostic texts to be valid. 
The only firm evidence for dating the Gospel of Thomas is its earliest Greek fragments, which was written no later than about A.D. 200. The first reference to the Gospel of Thomas by name occurs no earlier than Hippolytus, who was writing after A.D. 222 and 235. The author of the Gospel of Thomas shows a decided dependence on the canonical Gospels, demonstrating a later date for its composition than they. Ironically, this fact is used as one of the sole reasons for dating the Gospel of Thomas before the canonical Gospels. They claim that the less detailed and poorly developed concepts in the Gospel of Thomas reflect an earlier date than the canonical Gospels. However, literary scholars have noted that the opposite is generally true in literary development. For instance, a masterpiece is usually created, thereby establishing a genre type, and then future authors will try to copy that genre with less success. To the charge that there is no literary references to the Gospel of Thomas until the third century, the answer is usually something to the effect that the Christians somehow destroyed any record of it. This, of course, is hard to believe because the Christians at this point were being persecuted by the Roman Empire and were operating underground in small house churches circulating their own writings and would have little time or authority to march into anyone's house and destroy their writings against their will. In conclusion, the canon of the New Testament was not even on the agenda at the Council of Nicaea. The books that made up the New Testament were for the most part obvious and came about very organically and were agreed upon years before the Council of Nicaea. And there is literally no record whatsoever of the early church considering the Gnostic Gospels to be anything but obvious heresies. Thank you for your time.